The Biblical Museum of Natural History seeks to bring the rich animal world from the Bible back to life. And as founder and director of the museum, Rabbi Dr. Natan Slifkin explains, the words to describe the very animals in the Bible have been transliterated. This behemoth in the book of Job is described as a huge animal with an enormous mouth. You see how it sharpens its teeth against each other as it opens and closes its jaws. And it says that it lives in the swamps and the rivers and it eats grass. So what is it? It's a hippopotamus. Now, today we think of hippos as African animals, because today that's the only place you see them. But they used to live here in the land of Israel, on the coast of Israel, there were hippopotami. And a term used to describe an animal in the Bible could have more than one meaning in English, such as the Hebrew word namer, which could refer to both leopards or cheetahs. In Old English, the cheetah was considered to be a, a variety of the leopard. It was called a hunting leopard. And in biblical Hebrew, the Hebrew term namer seems to be a generic term for both animals. And as Rabbi Dr. Natan Slifkin tells us, while most animals described in biblical Israel were native to the Holy Land, there are some exceptions. Elephants, monkeys, and peacocks are not native to this part of the world, but they appear in the Bible as gifts that were sent in, that were imported for King Solomon. But animals are also mentioned in the Bible for a different purpose, sometimes serving as a symbol, such as the lion, which is mentioned over 150 times. Judah is symbolized as being a lion. And the temple, one of the names of the temple is Ariel, which means lion of God. So the lion is something that symbolizes royalty, symbolizes kingship, symbolizes strength and power. And the museum doesn't only aim to show the meaning and symbolism of animals in the Bible. It also explains kashrut, or Jewish religious dietary laws, in the holy books. The book of Leviticus also lists the dietary laws for fish. And what it mentions is that for a fish to be kosher, it has to possess fins and scales. So fins is easy enough. Pretty much every fish possess fins. Uh, but not every fish has scales. No, a trout does have scales, uh, but a shark does not have scales. The uh, dietary laws given by the Bible is that a mammal is kosher if it has split hooves and if it uh, brings up its cut. So for example, deer, sheep, goats, cattle, gazelles, they all have split hooves and they all chew their cud. Uh, pigs, on the other hand, pigs have split hooves, but they do not chew the cud and they're not kosher. Telling the stories and gaining a better understanding of the animals that once roamed the Holy Land during biblical times. Erica Jackson, I-24 News.